Hi, I'm Mike Brewer, pastor of the Blue Ash Presbyterian Church, and this is Mike's midweek message for June 10th, the year 2020. I want to sing the praise for a moment, the praise of the cardboard box. My wife and I just uh, moved. We moved from Cincinnati across the river back to northern Kentucky, and I don't know how you could move without cardboard boxes. Small boxes to carry heavy books, big boxes to carry lightweight clothing and blankets and coverlets and such. So efficient, so effective, so cheap. Cardboard boxes are wonderful. Apparently corrugated cardboard was invented in the 1850s in England. It was used as a liner for hats originally. But in 1871, some genius created the very first corrugated cardboard box. And the world has been a better place ever since. Now, I'm not saying that you can load anything you want into cardboard boxes. I remember one day a few years ago, I was cleaning the ashes out of our living room fireplace. I had a cardboard box I was throwing the ashes into to carry them out to the garbage can and didn't realize that there were a few live coals still lurking amidst the ashes. I won't go into the ugly details. Suffice it to say that if you ever have the urge to put red hot coals in a cardboard box, fight, fight the temptation. It won't turn out well. I can also tell you from experience that if you put wet things in a cardboard box, the bottom will begin to sag and will fall through and the stuff you were trying to carry will end up on the ground. I still think cardboard boxes are amazing, but you can't put just anything in them. You and I are made with some limits too. Human beings can fill themselves with all kinds of stuff. Some of it's healthy, some of it's not. Some of it we were just never meant to carry with us, though. Like, oh, we could fill ourselves with jealousy, which is so corrosive. It always eats us up from the inside out. We could fill ourselves with anger, chronic, seething anger, but you know, no matter how you tap that down and tape it up and cover it up, it always leaks out sooner or later. Some people carry a load of despair around with them. Their hearts and their guts are just filled with despair and hopelessness. And I think if you carry that long enough, the bottom falls out. And you're left without much of anything that's worth having. So we could fill ourselves with all kinds of things, some good and some bad. But what should we be filled with? Well, I could name a bunch of virtues and healthy habits and stuff, but the, the down and dirty answer, the quick and uh, Reader's Digest answer is from, uh, I'll borrow some words from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, where he prays that his readers may be filled with all the fullness of God. That's what we were designed for. We were designed to be filled with God. We were designed to be filled with God's Spirit and the fruit that grows from the presence of that Spirit. We were designed to be filled with Jesus, with his love and his teachings and his wisdom. That's what we were made for. And the thing is, if you're thinking, my goodness, how could I be filled with the fullness of God? There's not room in me. Well, there is. There is. God will accommodate. And if your next thought is, well, gosh, there wouldn't be much left for anything else, that's, uh, that's sort of the purpose. Occasionally with little kids, I have sat down and said, here's a glass and it's filled with air. Try to get the air out. And of course they, they can't. Even, even an engineer would be hard put to get the air out of a glass. You'd need expensive vacuum seals and pumps and might risk breaking the glass before you were finished. Or you could do what I do with the kids and that is bring out a pitcher of water and fill the glass with water. So easy, so simple. The water displaces the air and fills the glass with something wonderful, something cleansing and healing and restorative. Well, I think that's what Paul has in mind when he says, be filled with the fullness of God. And let that fullness of God so, so fill us, so immerse us that 
The unhealthy stuff, the hurtful stuff, the hateful stuff simply has to go away to make room for the love and the grace and the peace. Thanks for dropping in today. I hope something in this message will be of worth and value to you and give you something to think about. Please come back and see us again next week. And in the meanwhile, I pray that you will be healthy and be strong and be faithful. Bye. Catch you later soon.